welcome to the first um, Cooking with Tao. We're here with Chef Pumakai, and he is from Taro Patch Catering. And today we are making Lao Lao. So, tell me what we're doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're making Lao Lao, so hopefully all of you got your list as far as the ingredients that we're going to be using tonight. Uh, side note, anything else that you want to add into your Lao Lao, that's really up to you. Aside from the pork that's listed on the list, I know there was fish, um, breadfruit, or ulu, uh, uwala, or sweet potato. You can even use ufi or yams. Um, inside, if you want to do a vegetarian, which we're going to kind of go over as well. Um, so again, aloha everybody. I'm Pumai Kahi Gawi, and I'm from the Taro Patch Catering. We're located here in the Valley Behavioral, just in case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. Why? Why are you there? <laughs> so, never so know. you never know, right? <laughs> Anyway, I know a lot of people, so it's easy to get in on groups. Um, <laughs> so, so tonight I figure we concentrate on taro, uh, which is a staple within the Polynesian community, not only for the Hawaiian people, but for a lot of our cousins out there. There's just different variations of how we make our lao lao, or our lupulu, or our tamale. Um, so it's different ways, and however you make it, it's really up to your liking. Um, but today we are using the akalo, and these come from Hawaii, but you can get them here in Utah at various stores. Um, and I can tell you all of the stores because I go there too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Hawaiian Hut is probably one of the most well-known uh, stores that, that I know people will say, oh yeah, I know what that is. So anyway, so they do have them. Um, usually for everybody that sells luau leaf or lau, uh, lu, sorry, um, they come in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, just in case, if you want to get the fresh guys. Um, and they vary in pricing from $6.95 to $8.95 a pound. Um, so when they say a small bag for $6.50, six that could be 8 ounces. It's really up to the, the store that you go to, the vendor, and how they bag their blue. Um, so, like I said, they also sell them in, uh, well, two pounds bag is what I've seen. I've also seen them in uh, 10 pound bags, 20 pound bags. Uh, those 20 pound bags usually price from 65 to 85 dollars. You can normally make about 80 lao lao, just depending on how much lu or luau that you want to put in your, your product. Um, I think on the recipe it says five to six. It's really up to you. If you're using these little small guys, so the li'i li'i lao, you're going to need at least eight or 10, 12 to make up a good bundle. If you're using some big guys and they come bigger as well, um, you could use maybe three. Or use a mixture of different sizes. Uh, uh, on the table, I don't know if we can see, but we have different sizes of the lao, so we can kind of mix and match, kind of. Um, but again, for us, this is very important because of, of the significance in our Hawaiian culture. For the, the kalo, yeah, that is like our first board, or the first man in Hawaiian um, history. Um, so his name is Halo. But he's born deformed, and he's born as a colonel of a, um, he's born deformed, so the, he, he's still born, so they, the, the parents go ahead and border him on the certain corner of the hale, and up sprouts the, the kalo. Yep. And then a, a brother is born to the same family, and he takes on the same name as his elder brother. But we always refer to Haloa as the first Hawaiian. Um, so, the kalo, when it grows, it has the corn at the bottom, yeah, in the water. Uh, it may be dry lamb. And then this is what we call the ha. Yeah, H-A, the ha. And then this is the lao. Yeah, the lao. When it rains and the water gathers in the middle of this lao, that is like pure. So that is used in, in, in things that we do ceremoniously. Um, 
Yeah, so layer that is because it hasn't touched the ground. Um, and then the hog, and, and then you had the, the corn or the, the kalo. And then around the kalo, we have all the keiki. Yeah, all the little babies that grow from this one. And that we call the ohana, or the family. Yeah? Um, so that's the significance. Um, it's, it's just a little information, so it kind of triggers your, your hmm, kind of go out and do a little bit more research as we'll do tonight. As in prepping our leaves. I am of Hawaiian and Samoan descent. And for years, after Mickey, when Mickey Lao Lao, I would always credit uh, my Hawaiian side on teaching me certain things about Mickey Lao Lao. And one of them was to remove a certain part of the plant that doesn't taste good. So if you look at the lao, yeah, it has this nice little heart shape, right? But this very tip, there's a piece there that is pretty hard to swallow. So it's unpalatable. Unpal <laughs> so I've always had the, the teachings of removing that first because you could forget after everything else. And it's true, it's kind of the <laughs> <laughs> You know, kind of getting rid of the cat here in between the throat. Um, and so that's always removed. And then another piece, you know, with this ha, we will clean the ha. Now this depends again. Some Hawaiian people never clean the ha or use the ha in the food product. Yeah? For us, well, <laughs> if, if Eating lao lao was a luxury. This ha was part of the poundage you paid for. So you might as well eat it. And back in the days, in the, the times that we didn't have that much, we would include this. If not, we would feed it to our animals. Yeah? But we would clean it and add it to the lao lao just as a filler. Um, and that's what uh, Kalani is doing, is cleaning the the side is just like a banana. That's all you simply do is pull down those threads because they're hard to eat. But after you cook them down, they become palatable enough that you can eat it like a soup. So I'm going to show you a lao lao in a bundle and how to make stu luau, which is using pretty much the same ingredients, just in different techniques. So, we sent the recipe for pork. Um, when, I, when I was growing up in Mickey Lao Lao throughout, um, we would always include beef, pork, and salted fish. Rather than that be salmon or butterfish, um, later on I know you could use black cod as well inside. And all you do is salt it a little bit and then cut the pieces into one inch chunks as well, just like the meat or the other type of protein that you're going to put in. Okay. So, I was looking for tea leaves and I couldn't find tea leaves. So if you have tea leaves, kudos to you. <laughs> this is my tea leaf. It's called tinfoil. <laughs> And depending on what kind of tinfoil you use, yeah, we can tell what neighborhood you came from, Hawaii Kai or Nanakuni. If you're using Hawaii Kai, you have this hefty duty tinfoil. The kind in a rip when you tear it. See? <laughs> if you go to the cheap stores, hello, <laughs> they just might tear. So anyway, so it, it, it's a, a situation where the family can get involved. Yeah. Mom can do the ha, dad can do the lao, the kids can rip the tin foil, or maybe very expensive in a way. <laughs> but anyway, since we're on the continent, we cannot get lonely, I mean, TV a lot. Besides, you gotta worry about conservation. Because a lot of our Native plants in Hawaii are being used for a ridiculous thing. And uh, I'm not saying this is ridiculous, but if we can save a tree or uh, a lao ki, a 
flat, then we're good. So I'll use a take uh, your tin foil, maybe nine by six, 12, however you want. It depends on how big you want to make your bundles. So the bigger your bundle, the bigger your, your tin foil. I just turned it down my stuff. So, again, if you have these big rolls, pull it out, count four, that's what I do. <laughs> right down the middle, and then fold it in half, crease it, and then split it. Dude, that was about five. <laughs> okay, anybody has any questions? No? Alright. Oh yeah. <laughs> the older generation will cook with their nose. <laughs> Sorry. I started smelling stuff. I have some lao lao that's in a tamale pot. And the tamale pot is on the back of the on the back burner. But it has like a three inch pinion machine on the bottom that so you can fill water up. And then you have your steamer basket and you can put your um, La la inside instead of the tamales. But that water only lasts about an hour and a half, two hours at the max. So what I usually do is put marbles. If your kids have marbles, you don't know what to do with them. Take them. When you do that, you can put the marbles in the bottom of the pot. And when you run out of water, it starts clanking away. Clank, 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 clank. And you think, what is that? The la la. You gotta put some more water. Okay? So that's that's a tip. <laughs> Not all professionals use it. <laughs> Only the best. <laughs> Especially if you have bambuchas. <laughs> okay. Is anybody cooking with us or got their stuff ready? The recipe calls for 12 lao lao. Again, that might be six for some of us. That might be 18 for others. chicken and a pound of pork and I got a pound of sweet potatoes. So we're going to make one chicken lao lao, one pork lao lao for two and some sweet potato lao lao for our vegetarian friends out there. What I also did was cook up some rice and some eggs and potatoes so we can make some mac salad. Um, it's not a rice cooker. <laughs> <laughs> then there's tin foil that's placed upon a pot that has rice inside that you measure with your finger. What finger? That's up to you. <laughs> but this is my measuring cup. Wow. So, as long as you have the right line, you're good. Okay. So anyway, so now we can make lao lao. Okay, everybody ready? We're going to make that lao lao. And I'm still just peeling these. <laughs> story that I always gave credit to the my Hawaiian side of the family and that is when you clean the leaf that you always take off that part um, so yeah so I always credit the people that have taught me how to make lava well lo and behold one day on Facebook I read this story that was put up there by Jake Kikisamaru 
And now I have to change my story. My Samoan family <laughs> taught me how to remove that tip. Because like I said, it's not palatable. So if you don't take it out, I'm real finicky. I know. <laughs> Especially when making the, the lao lao and you're not taking that off, I'm watching your leaves, bro. Because as soon as you leave my table, I'm going to clean all your tips off the, the loo. <laughs> and that just irritates me because I've had it before, so I know. Take off the tip. But it is, it has a, um, a it's a folklore in Samoan tradition. So, mahalo to Jake Fiti Semanu. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, that uh, folklore, contact Jake so he can tell you all about it or share that page. I tried looking forward to talking to tell you the story about it. Mur -mur. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it to Jake. But yeah, that's my story. So yeah, Fafitai Lava or my Samu Ohana for teaching me how to do that because I think that's important. How much care you take into put, making your food is how much enjoyment the people will get out of your food when they eat it. So if you don't care, they're not gonna care either and you'll turn away. Uh, so what are we doing? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna cut our protein. Okay. Oh, you can that okay. So you got chicken. Okay. I got one pound of pork, and that's what the recipe called for. And then I simply just cut the pork into chunks. However big I want them, however small. Now I usually look for a lot of fat in the, the pork bud or whatever I'm using. If there's not enough, then you kind of look at the butcher or the, and ask the guy, do you have any fat, the, the scraps? And they're more than likely give it to you. If not, uh, no worries. Now, I've also learned to make lao lao with the butterfish and, and the beef. A lot of people around here don't like all that animal. Uh, so I take them out. I usually just make pork if we're doing a fundraiser for the Hula Studio. And for us at home, then I'll normally go ahead and indulge if it calls, if we can. Like I said, if you don't find butterfish, use cod, black cod. If you don't have butterfish, use salt salmon. If you don't have salt salmon, just buy the salmon, cut them up into little slits, and put Hawaiian salt inside, and then leave that for maybe about four hours, and then go ahead and scrape that off of the skin, and then put it into your lala. Oh, wait, wait, that's something going on. Sorry. <laughs> cut them up in chunks, but take off the skin when you put them in your lala. All right, ready? I'm ready. Okay, so the recipe calls for five or six lau, uh, luau leaf or lu. So what I normally do is, if there's a good variety, I'll take uh, different sizes and make up that match. If there's just one size, then I'll kind of go that route as well. Okay. If you have the bigger leaves, they have these big stems, and that's the guy that you want to put on the very bottom of your steamer. If not, then these are not going to cook that well, and you want the, the loo to be a little bit pala head. Uh, what is that in English or palahe means it just falls apart like butter. Okay, <laughs> so we want the loo to be palahe as well. <laughs> the meat, same thing. If it has fat, it just dresses everything else that's in there and makes it luscious. So, <laughs> if you don't like the fat, put it off to the side for somebody else because it goes good with hot rice. You got some mayonnaise up. Never mind. Anyway, um, so, so we're going to grab a big loo, small loo, or medium loo, and then we're just going to put the, the loo out these different ways, yeah, put them around. Three, four, five. So we want the green side up, because there's a, a, a dull side, no. light side and a bright, uh, bright green, and that's the side that we want to put the meat in. So, now sometimes when you buy lao lao or kalu pig, it is beyond salty. And that is because people just, well, it depends on what the recipe may call for. 
So sometimes it's a little salty. So I got teaspoons for both of us, because you really don't need that much. So what you'll do, in one hand, left hand or right hand, you're gonna put your your pork, and you wanna put maybe uh, a quarter pound per person, depends on you, could be half a pound as well. Uh, you want to leave out bones because once you start plowing into the the protein, it's all hands on deck. As far as the salt, the paakai is what we call in Hawaiian, yeah, paakai. It's best to use sea salt. Now, what we, when they say, oh, you got to use Hawaiian salt. I, <laughs> Hawaiian salt that we buy from the store is commercially made. It's just made a different way to, re, to resemble what Hawaiian salt would look like from the salt field. We cannot sell the salt from the salt field like in Hanapepe, Kauai. We have salt pans that are worked by families and generations. We, they cannot sell that to the general public because it's unsanitary. Um, so the salt that we see in the market that is labeled Hawaiian salt is processed. Okay, just a heads up. But I've also found there's a Japanese flake salt that you can find in the Oriental Markets here in Utah that works just as well, and it it's, has a pure taste. Uh, but in the buying, well, anything works. Okay? So, <laughs> we put a little pork, a little fat, just to get the juices going, and maybe a teaspoon, how much protein you put inside, that's how much you want to adjust your, your, your seasoning. Now, from the back, I just flip one end of that heart shape on the bottom leaf, Fold with the thumb over to the right side. Fold the, the pointy finger on the right hand. And then kind of match the, the size of the bundle and then roll that puppy up. Oh. Ooh. Busted. Oh. Who's doing that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So again, for all those that, that wasn't here, oh, thank you. we're gonna make a couple more. Yeah, I said, so again, we grab different sizes of our luau leaf or our lau, and we just kind of place them to make a bowl or form a, a bowl in our hand. You gotta make sure you wash these as well, yeah? Because they come from Hawaii, or you can get them from Tonga as well, yeah? But wash them because, well, unless you wanna eat you know, some of the aina, that's fine, <laughs> go ahead. But you don't want to eat the little creatures that might be on the back of the leaves. Um, and I found that sometimes here, they just bag them, so you got to check them. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do is grab some sweet potato, and give Kalani some. I put some in my pork. I'm also going to make vegetarian sauce. For all you vegetarians out there, you can put sweet potato, you can put oofy. <laughs> you can throw it at the guy not doing nothing. Um, <laughs> but, you know, same thing. Oh, right, look, who's leaf there? Just <laughs> What about veggies with meat? You can do veggies with meat. So I'm gonna have you do chicken with okay. sweet potato. Let's add yep, just add that and the same thing with your pot guys. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we have some sweet potato, we're gonna have some pork in this one. And again, how much low or how much uh, protein you use, that's really up to you. Now that also adjusts the cooking time. Normally the lao lao is about maybe a quarter pound of protein and then everything else tallies up to maybe almost half a pound. In the crock pot, it is about four to six hours on low, um, four hours on high. You can go overnight as well on low. Um, you can leave your house, turn it on, by the time you come home for dinner, your lao lao is ready. Um, in a pot like this tamale steamer back here, give or take six hours, maybe. Just depends on what kind of gas you got, what kind of you know, heat that's under the pot. It could take you six to eight hours. Um, 
The softer you want the leaves, the longer I would leave it. Just turn down the heat a little bit towards the end, so that way you still have heat and everything just melts down in, in the, the leaf. Um, we can do one more, go ahead. All right. There's been times when we made lao lao and we had to use spinach. <laughs> Not to run. Not the same. Okay? There's lots to say. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> <I tell> Helen. You. <laughs> you know what's wrong? This. <laughs> this is a cakey. And yet they will pick them and put them in the bag. Yeah, yeah but, but I have no control over the guy that will pick them up. <laughs> so, I have control over the guy who will clean them. Though. Anyway, well, I forget where I was now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so if, if the luo leaf was scarce, we would use maybe three on the bottom, and then the rest we would fill up with spinach or young potato leaves. And they taste the same, you just have to cook it a little different um, to break down the fibers in the, uh, the leaves, but it also works. So, yeah, if you don't have lao, yeah, which you can. I've even done it with spinach alone. Uh, cabbage. So the cabbage helps it steam. <laughs> so you take the cabbage, you put all the spinach in the middle of the cabbage, and then you kind of roll it up, and then the cabbage on the outside helps to steam the spinach. Oh, yeah. Okay? So, anyway, there's another. Okay, how do we wrap the lao lao? Kind of easy. Take the sunny side up of your tin foil, or the sunny side up of uh, the shiny side of your tea leaf if you have tea leaf. Yep. If you have tea leaf, you're going to put one facing away from you, and then the other goes the other way. So east, west, north, south, however you want to do it, but there's a cross. And then you put your lao in the center. And then you're going to roll up the center uh, tea leaf. And then you're going to bring up the other tea leaf, but hold it directly up so you have the stems up here. And then you're going to tie the bottom of the stems from that second tea leaf. And that's how you wrap the bundle in the, in the, the tea leaf and then you steam it right there. But right now we have the, the Holy Man tea leaf. <laughs> So again, sunny side up, we take our bundle. Oh, you know what I forgot to show? Is that we can take some of this hot and put that inside the, uh, with the long long. And again, all it does is they're fillers. Yep. And make sure you clean them. If not, <coughs> okay, you just throw it back up. Okay. So I put it not, not too much corner, but in, on one side of the, the bottom. Okay. I'm going to flip that bottom over. Then I'm going to roll. And then touch the top part. And then fold in the bottom. So you end up with a, a bundle, yeah? So, depending on how flat, <laughs> how much pressure you put on it. <laughs> It'll come out as a disc or round, so up to you. Uh, but that's why you gotta mark it on how you wanna remember that it's a pork or vegetarian. Uh, this is our vegetarian. Why does it matter which side of the oil you use? It doesn't. Okay. So, does it matter what side you wrap it? No. As long as it, it, there's, um, it's sealed all the way around, but you don't want the tin foil like compressing the leaves, because then it'll take a while for the steam to penetrate the, the tin foil. Gotcha. Yeah? So that's the only downfall. The tighter you wrap them, the longer you gotta cook them. 
So again, you cook lao lao anywhere from four hours to eight. Depending on you and what you're using as your vessel for cooking, whether it's a gas stove, electric. Electric might be a bit, bit longer. Um, crock pot is easy. Insta pot is even faster. Uh, it's about maybe an hour and a half, two hours, your lao lao is done oh. on the insta pot. Yep. So, um, So while Glenn's doing that, I'm going to grab some milk. I'm pretty sure I wrapped mine a little too tight, but... <laughs> Julia Child, I would have somebody do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> but since I ate. <laughs> Sophia, what goes best with lao lao? Rice and potato mac salad. And you know, sometimes you don't have elbow macaroni. Or you may have overcooked it where it looks like a big something. And then your mother will pull your ears because no more macaroni salad now. Anyway, here at Premier Cafeteria, we make a lot of baked spaghetti. So with the leftovers, I just take them and chop them into, not bite size, but little petite size. That way, you know, waste the spaghetti, you're gonna use it for something else. And around here, we use a lot of stuff. They have second life. You know what it is, but they may have third or fourth. <laughs> If you like soups, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> but see, that's all you do, you just chop them up like that. Earlier we had some potatoes going along with some eggs. So we mix that around. I'm gonna throw the spaghetti noodles inside. I'm gonna start and mix that while I come back. Okay. Have you guys seen it done like that before? I have not, but I'm excited to try it. And if you have any questions, save them up for the end and we'll check on you. Oh, for real? We're losing some people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Small. Send it. So all I did was boil some eggs, boil some potatoes, chop up the, the spaghetti noodles, and then I'm gonna, I, uh, did I saw What? I oh. No, no. Okay, I gotta check. A little hard. <laughs> but there's no seasoning. Okay. Hawaii people are fanatics with best food mayonnaise. Since I've been living here in Utah, best food's kind of come up. Taste wise, it tastes different than when I'm in Hawaii. I have no idea. So anyway, my go-to is whatever's on sale, buy them and, and make your salad. So again, we got potato, mac, macaroni, spaghetti, uh, some eggs. I think three scoops. Three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Now when I used to work a lunch wagon back in Hawaii, sometimes your macaroni salad doesn't make it back to the ice, the ice box after every serve. So we would take yellow mustard, 
maybe a teaspoon, not too much, but just right. <laughs> Um, and you kind of mix it in there. If you want to dress it up, grate some carrots. You can cut some cucumbers, oh no, celery. Um, and put that in there as well. You can even do uh, olives with that. What I do sometimes, <laughs> a lot of times, is put furikake. Furukake is a seaweed, oh, the seaweed. sesame, seed, yeah, and a little bottle of shakers. Yeah. But you put that in your salad. Yeah. Yeah? That makes it fancy. Yeah, that makes it fancy. <laughs> and then you like it more fancy, you go by imitation crab, cut that puppy up, put that in there, grate a little bit round onion, and mix that all together. The mustard does impart some taste, but it also sustains the shelf life of the salad. So if it's left out for four hours outside of refrigeration, you're good to go still. Okay? Promise. Unless you get weak stomach then. <laughs> for us Samoans and Hawaiians and Tongans, we usually good. It's you Palangi people that for our limit. Okay, so that's done. So, when you're done with your, your lao lao, put them in your cooking vessel, whether it's a tamale pot, pot or a crock pot. Okay, now it gets a little funner. That's part two. Now if you want to take your loo and just cook it down into a mush, you can include the ha as well in this part. <clears throat> My mother had a, uh, she was allergic to the loo. So if she ate it, she would get itchy throat. And I've always heard that burn up too. Don't touch your mouth. Don't do this after you touch the loo. And then especially raw kalu. So, for her, she would put baking soda when she's cooking the loo, and she'll put baking soda to take away the itchy. So if you're sensitive to the loo and you cannot eat it, um, when you cook it down, put in some baking soda. Not too much. The only thing, when you cook it down with baking soda, it comes out like this fluorescent green. I don't think you can see that. Yeah, but it comes out this green. Now, me growing up, this was the stew luau I ate. If it wasn't green, there was something wrong. <laughs> and whenever I went to family parties, or you know, even a, even, even a lupulu, uh, or something, you know, if it came out dark, I really didn't eat it because I didn't grow up with it. This is what I grew up with. Yeah. And unfortunately, I cook it the same way. You don't have to put the baking soda, you just have to cook that loo to a consistency where it's not going to itch the throat. And that can happen to anybody. <laughs> so I have this pot going with some beef. So you cook it down and you put it in the, a colander and you strain out all the liquid. So what you end up is with the pulp. This took me, I don't know, about 45 minutes to do. So it's like a pound, maybe two pounds of loo that you end up with this. Yeah, it depends on how good the loo is. If not, you could end up with less. Um, so I take that, and some people say they cannot eat lao lao. So this is another version, and we call it simply luau stew. It's made with beef, chicken, or pork. Tonight, I'm using the pork. Yeah? And all you do is just mix it into your pork that you have cooking or your, your protein. And you want to make sure it's tender so nobody's beefing with it as well. But you mix it down, you end up mixing, um, thickening your liquid. So what you may end up with is a thick stew 
Which some people liquid, like. How much liquid do you start? Enough to cover the meat. Okay. Um, this is about four quarts of water to two pounds of meat, I think it was. Okay. Um, so you come up with this thick consistency. And all you do is put it on the stove and you get a little thicker. You can add more um, beef broth just to loosen the, the luau. And then it will come thinner and then you can drink it. I wouldn't recommend thickening with cornstarch or flour because it just won't uh, adhere to the loo. Now some people are commenting they couldn't find the loo or it was really hard to find. And yeah, I went to two of my favorite places and the shelves were bare. So I barely got some loo for tonight's demo. Um, but it is out there. If you cannot find the fresh and you want to make this version, there is a dried luau leaf that comes from the Philippines. And they come in four ounce bags, which is about six dollars and somewhat cents. And they come a little bit bigger as well. Um, dragon something. But anyway, if you look it up, it says luau leaf. They're on sale right now for $3.49 for that eight ounce or four ounce bag. Um, and they'll deliver to your door. And I've done it before. I visited Georgia. And my son-in-law then will pick up that dry luau leaf and make their stew luau for their family functions. You cannot do nothing else with it. The only thing that you have to do though with that bag luau leaf is you have to rinse it four or five times because they dry it on bamboo sticks. So the leaves impart the take of the, uh, the taste of the bamboo. So if you don't do it, it <laughs> you'll feel like a panda. <laughs> And I've seen the pandas eat. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, and then, so again, you just warm it up. So it takes out some heat. This is my tamale pot that I had going here in the kitchen. This is the crock pot. And like I said, the Insta pot works just as well. It, it depends on how you want to work your, your vessel as far as the cooking. Um, you may have to invest in a lao lao towel or two. <laughs> Back home we use burlap bags. If you can get burlap bags, huh. you put the burlap bags. If not, you take your kitchen towels, the one that you're not going to use anymore, because they will impart the, the smell of lao lao. And, and these have been, there's some plates up on the shelf yes. if you want to reach that for you. And maybe a bowl or two. <laughs> So again, we're at Terra Patch Catering. We're located with, within the building of um, our friends here at Valley Behavioral. We're part of um, uh, Polynesia. Huh? Oh. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Business Alliance, along with our friends at Pictar. We're a Pictar company. We do a lot of stuff in our community. And if there's anything else that we can do, well, check us out and let us know. If you have a business, we encourage you to get a hold of us. Our COO for uh, PIPA, as it's called, is our John Tutau. And he can hook you up with getting into our Polynesian Business Alliance. Um, it has everything from hair to makeup to realtors <laughs> to cooks. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I got to talk to John. Some stuff I not find. I'm sure you're out there. So if you own a Polynesian business, or if you are Polynesian and you want uh, you want us to, to be a part of your network, then we want you to be a part of ours too. So get a hold of us and we can add you to our 2021 uh, itinerary that we're updating. And there's also some online stuff that we're doing that we welcome everybody to share their thoughts. Uh, like we say in Hawaii, to share them on all because we're here for the broader community rather than just one guy. Um, so, the lao lao, in this one I, I put six lao lao, and you don't have to, have to have anything fancy. At the bottom, I couldn't find my, my little thingy, I don't know what it's called, but it's a colander that looks like a little lotus, and it goes poof, and then poof, I couldn't find it. But that's good to put it in the bottom of the pots if you don't have anything else. Use the, uh, I use a butter tray put the sticks of butter and just flipped it over so it took some height 
for the log house to steam. Yeah. Yep. So again, when your when your tea leaf is kind of tinged, that means the log house is pretty much cooked. Yeah. So it'll come out looking like that, or it should be. The one that you do with the steamer, <laughs> hence another egg. <right. laughs> Alright, it's kind of dull. Yeah, don't do this at home. Get a tongue. A tongue. <laughs> or heat club, so you can so you can take the heat. Yeah. Uh, okay. So again, crock pot, la la on this side. Yeah, if you take a cut into it, then you see all the fork and the, the leaves. These do have the hot inside, so there's a lot. Of, some people like a lot of luau leaf or lu in, the, in their la la. Some people don't like it, they like a lot of meat. And this was the one that's done the steamer. You can see from the steamer, you do get a little more tenderness in the la la. Because the one in the crock pot put for about eight hours. So, if you want your luau leaf a little more tender, you just go about 12. This one was done for about six hours, and it's just falling apart in the tamale top. <laughs> so again, if you don't have a steamer, go buy a tamale pot. Sometimes they come on sale, but you have to go to the Mexican store. Uh, and they usually have them on the, the top shelves. Um, here's our rice again. For all the old Older people out there, <laughs> we all have to make rice in a pot. Yeah? If your mother say go make rice, you always grab the rice pot, cook it on the stove top. Rather it was gas, rather it was propane, rather it was electric. But you always have to have that finger. It always comes down to what finger. I learned two ways. This finger. <laughs> And this finger, yeah, it's that first line, that first knuckle line of your pointy and of your baby finger. Right? You know, one's bigger than the other, but the line match. So, when you're washing rice, as soon as you wash rice, you dump it out, and you measure with that finger. And you should come out perfect the whole time. Put it on a medium low, cooks about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to fluff it up afterwards. I know the Holly guys made this for some reason, and I think it was for coca uh -huh. or something. Uh -huh. But it's a big fork that you can grab and just fluff your rice. See, a lot of people they don't fluff their rice. <laughs> Who fluffs their rice out there? Okay, so I want to fluff that rice. So. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have. We got lao lao, we got stew luang, we have sticky rice, and we have potato mac salad that can last four hours outside of your ice box. <laughs> so, if you're not sure, this is how you plate it up. You always want to start with some dinner rice. Okay. On one side, a little bit higher than the other guy. You grab your salad. You notice it's a little creamy. That's how you want it. <laughs> you don't want it with a little bit of mayonnaise, because then, what you do? <laughs> and it's not best food. So you put that on the slightly mount side. So it's kind of going up. Then you take your lao lao and you flip them. That it should expose the back of the leaf. Yep. And then you pass it out to your friend. You say, yep, to the lao. And you let her do the taste testing to see what went on in the kitchen. 
So again, for the Darrow Batch Catering um, LLC, I want to thank Victor along with uh, his board of directors and his many members and volunteers that helped to make all of our programs a success. I want to thank John Tutau and Piba with the Pacific Islander Business Alliance. Oh yeah, we're growing. We're going to go to Arizona in a couple of weeks with that chapter out there. So if you're in Arizona, if you know anybody in Arizona that has a business and they're from Hawaii or they're Hawaiian or they're Polynesian, target someone, let us know so we can get a hold of them and have them become a part of a network that is fully extending out to the different states. Yeah, so mahalo again, Victor. Do you have questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. any questions before we eat? <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm already eating. It's <laughs> really good. Before um, we eat. Does anybody have any questions? There we go. Susie, you guys have any questions? Everybody posted a lot of over Facebook. Oh, gotcha. But we were asking, such as people were asking, where can they get the Lao Lao Chiefs here in Utah? And uh, I just wanted to acknowledge we have someone online in Maryland, and we have people all the way from Hawaii.
I just want to say I have never had um, mac salad with spaghetti and noodles before, and it's really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll definitely be trying that at home. Um, if we don't have any questions, then thank you so much for joining us for our first ever uh, Cooking with Val. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing these every first Monday of the month, so be looking out for the next one. And if you are um, <clears throat> someone who knows how to make something great, a Pacific Islander that knows how to make a good traditional food, please get a hold of me, um, kalani at pigtar.org. Um, and we'll get you in here. So thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you. Wow.